most common things that I hear people say to me about the Mustang is like, yo, it's a cool car, but it needs a little more power. And to be honest, I would agree with you. So the mod that we're doing today, I actually bought several weeks ago, but to use the mod properly, you need to update the tune on the car. So I requested an update tune from Bama Performance and I've kind of just been waiting on that. And then of course, when the whole moving thing happened, I was like, well, I guess I'll just wait until I move into the new place because I wanted to do this mod at my old house, but then of course there was no time. But despite the two week delay, I have been putting off doing this mod for way too long because I really should have done this a year ago when I got the car. And I went ahead and did my exhaust first, so I've already done a cat delete on the Mustang if you're not caught up. But I need to do the cold air intake. So that's what we're doing. Cold air intake, Mustang. All right, so the cold air intake kit that I've decided to run is the Roush kit. There's no real reason in particular for that. I know that a lot of people run JLT, and I like the JLT one, but I also really like quality of Roush. I know that they always make good products for the Mustang. And I'm also running a Roush exhaust, so I just kind of found it fitting to go with the Roush instead of JLT, but I'm sure that both of these options work fine. So we're gonna assemble this in just a little bit, but we need to start by removing the factory air intake, so I'm gonna get going on that. Okay, so thus far the install has been pretty straightforward. I just had to disconnect this. There were a couple clamps holding this section of the tube onto here. And then there was literally just one bolt that was holding the air box on. So now that I've got that off, the next step is to take the mass airflow sensor off of this and move it to the new intake tube. Okay, something I think I should mention is that this cold air intake comes with a, uh, a little insert tube and what this is for is for like if you're running the car without a tune or it's tuned to run with the factory intake, you can still run this cold air intake setup with this insert inside of the, um, the intake tube and what it does is it just limits the amount of air that can come into the engine and so that way it would run like it would from factory. But I have a tune for the car to run with the, uh, the performance intake setup so I'm not gonna be running this insert. As for the rest of this install, things should be pretty straightforward. So let me show you what I'm looking at here. This new air box uses one aluminum spacer and then all the factory hardware from the old box and it just kinda sits right here. I have to take that bolt out and it'll go through this hole and then I'll just kind of slot in the new pieces here. This will go kind of in this guy. Right. And then this piece will go kind of like this and then I'll put the filter on it and there's a bunch of clamps and stuff. Yeah, that's what's happening. It's super straightforward. You know Roush came in clutch with that diagram booklet, but they didn't send a freaking sticker. Like, bro, where's the sticker? Come on, please. Also, I forgot to mention that this little grommet needs to go in here. So you just kind of fiddle around with it for a little bit. And then this piece will squeeze in like that. Okay boys, so we're almost done with the rest of this install. So. The last thing there is to do is I need to finish taking the rest of this off because as you can see, it's not quite long enough. It doesn't quite reach the end of this, but Roush included a new hose in the kit. So I just have to take this off, use these little ends with the green whatever's on them, and then I'll put these into the new hose and I'll attach it onto here. Oh, and I still have to put the new filter on. I, I haven't done that yet. Okay, so I've got everything installed, but before I can start the car, I actually have to flash the ECU. 
A lot of people have questions about tunes and how they work, so I'm gonna quickly show you guys how I uploaded the tune that I requested from Bama onto my tuning device. So I've made a video about tuning before, but this is completely different depending on what type of car you have and stuff. So I'm just gonna show you how I do it for the Mustang, but I think it's even different for the newer Mustang. So like this may or may not pertain to you, but I think it's still useful information. So I went to Bama's website and I logged into my account and I just gave them all the information about my car. And then they sent me this update tune. So they send you an email and they say like, like, hi, Caden, Sean from Bama, blah, 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 blah. Shout out to you, Sean. And then they send you the tunes that you requested based on the mods that you've installed. So I have an 87 performance tune and a 91 race tune. So in Oregon, we can't buy 93 octane gas. We can only get 92. And so the way that it works is that there's no option for a 92 tune, but you just request what's lower. So if you have 92 gas, you'll need the 91 tune. But if you're running 87, you can use the 87 tune. The only catch is that if you upload the 91, one tune you can't run 87 gas so if you're gonna run the performance tune you have to run premium gas for now I'm just gonna upload the 87 tune so that way I can run regular and then if I feel like bumping it up to the performance tune then I'll do that but I've downloaded these two tunes down here so I'm just gonna drag them over to the desktop real quick and then I'll continue from there all right so this software here is the software that comes with the device so this is just like the tuner updater software whatever and so what you do is you plug in your tuner this is mine and so you just plug that into the computer but then you're just gonna want to click automatically check for updates it's gonna gather some device information and then you just want to click update device okay so the update is taking a long time so I'll just update you when it's done <laughs> okay there we have it so the device is up to date now so now I should be able to load custom tune file okay so I did a little test run of this to make sure that I knew how to do it right so basically you just go and you browse through the files and then you click open so then that puts it right here in available tunes and then you just click it you click add to device so now I have the 87 performance tune and the 91 race tune so then I'll just click program and then it programs the device slowly there we go and then we're good so now I have these two tunes loaded onto the tuner so now I should be able to just take this back to the car plug it in and then go from there also as I was trying to record this Taylor started freaking out about his freaking because the frog killed another uh, one of the fish well, good luck with that. All right, so now that we're in the car, we're gonna go ahead and plug in the tuner to the car itself. So the tuner came with this little OBD cord thing. It plugs in down under the dash. Yours might be in a different spot, I don't know, but then it'll just plug into the top of this guy. All right, so then the screen comes, scream? The screen comes on. We're just gonna go ahead and click program vehicle, and then it'll tell you that it's illegal in California. So if you're in California, make sure you don't break the law, okay? All right, so now we're gonna turn key on, press continue. It's gonna process some data. Now we're gonna select this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the performance one because I have 87 in the tank right now. I might go to the 91. I'm not quite sure yet, but we're going with the 87 right now. And then it just gives you some parameters that it does. So we're just gonna go ahead and click approve. And then we'll just press continue. Then it says to turn the key off. Now it says to turn the key back on. So then it saves the stock data. Oh my God, stop dinging, please. Okay, so then it saves the stock data so that way you can revert it back to stock at a later point. And then once it saves the stock data, then it'll upload the new tune. And then hopefully this will start. I gave them all the parameters. So if I get a check engine light, I'm gonna be upset. Also for anybody that hasn't been following the channel, this car has a cat delete with an off-road X pipe. And then now I have the cold air intake. So last time when I got it tuned, I didn't have the cold air intake. I just had the cat delete and I still got a check engine light for catalytic system malfunction. So I, the reason why that is, is because when you get a cat delete, you're supposed to get the rear O2 sensors turned off because pretty much the only purpose of the rear O2 sensors is just to tell the computer that the, o, that the catalytic converter is working. And so what you do is you turn off the rear O2 sensors and then you won't get the check engine light. Either that or like, I know some people use spacers for their O2 sensors and things like that, but they should be able to tune it out when you request it. But I don't think that they turned off the O2 sensors with my last tune. So I had a check engine light for that, but hopefully they got everything right with this. I went ahead and told them all the new stuff. And I told them that last time I had a check engine light. And so the guy was really understanding. I think that might've been why it took a little bit longer to get the tune, but uh, yeah, that's where I'm at with it. Hopefully there's no check engine light. Oh, it saved all the stock data. So now it's just programming the ECU. Also, there's a bunch of just like crazy messages on the dash over there. Don't worry about that. 
that's fine. That one's actually kind of true. My fuel level is low, but there's not an odometer error. It's just because you're tuning it and it's going through all the system processes. So this just takes a minute. Some of the lights over here, you'll see like the wrench light and the, the spooky ghost light. Don't worry about any of those lights. They're just on temporarily because it's tuning it, I guess. I mean, a lot of people say Bama sucks and I think they're okay. Or I'm not sure about their race tunes yet because I've only used the like 87 performance tunes. Um, I think if I wanted a perform or a race tune, I would probably go and put the car on a dyno just because I don't trust. I have horrible trust issues. I'd rather spend more money and have it done like by like, I'm not saying that Bama's not professional, but I'd rather have it done specific to this car because the reality is that every car is different. They wear in slightly differently and they show different numbers on dynos and no two cars are identical once they've been driven for any amount of time. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. Bama is a good thing for like a basic tune with just basic mod setups, but if you're doing anything big or you really want like a super fast tune, probably wouldn't do Bama just with, from my experience. But I mean, I'm a college kid, you know, I'm just having fun with this. So this works for me. All right, so hopefully the car starts. Also, there's like some people over there and this car is very loud. So I hope I don't like disrupt whatever they're doing, but here goes nothing. Okay, so I just started the car and pulled it into the garage. As soon as I started it, there was this old lady like kind of over to the side and she like i guess it scared her like it's really loud oh my god i'm a terrible person that i feel terrible but the car's running it worked fine so it seems to be idling good i'm gonna let it warm up a little bit and then i'm also gonna pop the hood and check every connection again just one last time to make sure that nothing went wrong but yeah that's exciting i'm really glad that nothing happened the next day okay so it's the next day right now and so last night after i got the tune uploaded i just went on a test drive to make sure that the car was functioning but i didn't really record anything because i was losing daylight and the footage just wouldn't have been very good i did a couple pulls and to be honest like the car feels a little bit quicker this isn't a mod that's gonna make the car insanely fast or anything but the most important thing that i think i noticed is that the power band just across the board is a whole lot smoother when i was running the stock intake it was kind of boggy down below and then it would pull pretty good and then at the top end it would just kind of droop it was just it was just garbage on the top end but now I noticed that the torque curve is a lot more linear I noticed that as the car is accelerating it feels like it's actually going faster and I've noticed a little bit of power on the top end it seems to pull a little bit harder all the way up to redline I also noticed that when I had the catalyst exhaust with the stock intake I was averaging about 16 miles per gallon and when I went on my test drive last night I got the car to average about 20 which is just awesome especially considering that I was doing hard pulls and I was getting 20 miles per gallon like that's really really awesome I'm not a hundred percent sure about this because I'm not a scientist or an engineer yet or anything like that but my theory as to why it was getting worse gas mileage before is because an engine is set up to balance so the stock intake is meant to run with catalytic converters so if you take the cats off like I did you run into a problem where the intake kind of becomes maxed out like it can only suck in so much air but relieving the back pressure by taking out the cats is gonna make the exhaust flow a lot faster. You'll have a little bit of suction pulling the exhaust out because the exhaust is flowing much quicker, but the engine can only put out as much as is coming in. And if the intake is maxed out, like it can't take in any more air, then that suction ends up being compensated by the fuel injectors. And so I'm not 100% sure about that, but I believe that that's why it was running rich. Because even when I would go on long highway trips and just be super easy on the car, I would average about 16.2. And when I was doing a bunch of driving in the cities, it smelled like it was burning really rich. Like it definitely was running more rich than it normally would have. But also I would get about 14 to 15 miles per gallon. It just wasn't wasn't very great so it was kind of awesome to see that as soon as I installed the new intake my efficiency just went through the roof like I got it up to 20.5 and I could probably like if I was doing a long trip or anything like that I bet you I could get it up to about 22 but I was also like doing a bunch of downshifting and pulls and whatnot so with that spiel out of the way let's go on a quick cruise and I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about <laughs> So just sitting at idle, it says I have 19.5 average. Obviously at idle, that'll go down a little bit because idling isn't very efficient. But when I'm on the road, it's definitely better. All right, so I've got her out on some open roads now, so I'll try to show you what I mean. So rolling in about third gear right now, my downshift to second. All right, now watch the RPMs.
So overall, the car is just running a whole lot smoother and the downshifts are like super crispy. The throttle response is definitely better than it was before. So I'm in fourth gear right now. Then if I want to downshift to third, watch how smooth this is. Just like immediate pedal response, which is just awesome. I think that's one thing that Bama does really well with their tunes is even though it might not maximize power or anything like that, they do a super good job of dialing in the throttle response because this car with the downshifts is just super crisp. You always know where the throttle is going to be after the tune and it's been really awesome to drive. Oh. <laughs> Rolling fourth gear, come up to a curve, down to third. I'm not saying that this Bama tune is perfect because I think Bama tunes are far from perfect, but for what it is, I mean, you pay about 400 to 450, 450 bucks, you get the tuner, and then you get free update tunes for life. It's certainly a much cheaper route than getting a dyno tune. Obviously, to finish the bolt-on build with the Catalyst exhaust and the cold air intake, getting it dyno tuned and really making it perfect at every single RPM would be amazing. But, I mean, I'm a broke college kid, and for me, like, this works really well. So, are cold air intakes worth it? I think so. I definitely think that it helps. Also, the boost in efficiency and throttle response is super, super nice. Granted, I don't think that it would have that effect if the car wasn't tuned. I think that having the tune is almost more important than the cold air intake. But, having the Catalyst exhaust and the cold air intake gets so much better performance once you add the tune. So, if you're gonna run cold, a cold air intake, I would highly, highly recommend getting the tune for it as well, because without the tune, I just don't think that it's really worth it. And if you, like if your cold air intake has the little cutout like mine does, I don't really think there's any point in running it. I kind of, because it would make it function just like stock. But at the same time, without the tune, you're not really supposed to remove that cutout. It might help the engine breathe a little bit better, but at the same time, if you're running cats, the engine is just gonna end up running lean. And if it's not tuned to run with taking in more air, then you're just gonna end up with problems. It's not gonna run right. That being said, if you're doing a full bolt-on build, obviously having a cold air intake is essential, but I would steer away from anything south of like 200 to $250, unless you're buying a nice one that's used because there's also a lot of companies that build like these short ram air intakes and stuff like that, that supposedly increase horsepower, but all that's doing is just making the intake outlet closer to the engine, which is just gonna heat up quicker and you're just gonna end up sucking warm air into your engine. So, highly recommend not buying a short ram air intake. That's definitely a lot of BS, but an actual cold air intake is definitely something to look into if you're looking for bolt-on power with the tune, of course. Because without the tune, you probably gain like one horsepower, maybe. Like, it's just, I don't think it would really be worth your time. It's kind of a weird shot, but we're gonna roll with it. So that's gonna wrap up my video about the cold air intake. It's definitely a cool mod that I think is worthwhile with some other supporting mods, but I wouldn't really recommend it as like a first mod. I think that if you were to drop $300 on something and it's just for the cold air intake and you don't have a tune or exhaust or anything, I would probably just stick to like some aesthetic type mods, get some cool stripes or something like that. But when you are ready to do like a full power build on a car or anything like that, it's definitely a must. Um, it does improve the throttle response and the top end power is definitely worthwhile. It also kind of affects the tone a little bit, which I didn't really talk much about in this video. Maybe I'll make another video about that at some point. But if you liked today's video, make sure you leave a like down below. Consider subscribing for more car content and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out and dream big.